Is Diluc really that bad, or have we been unfair to him? Well, now that his new costume dropped, this is a good opportunity for me to find out once and for all. And I gotta tell you, I discovered some really interesting things that have changed my old opinion I had about him. But before I tell you more, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Blade Idol. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I'd like to turn my brain off and just do some fun and relaxing farming, which is why I want to talk about Blade Idol. This is a very popular and a really lively 2D game where you can feel the progression of power on a daily basis. You can grow your character in many different ways, like enhancing abilities, improving skills, and obtaining new gear. There's always something different that you can do to gain new power. And best of all, this game has an offline mode, so if you're too busy to log in but still want to gain huge rewards, which are almost as good as if you were online, well, you can easily do this in Blade Idol and always progress in the game whether you're online or offline. And right now, there's a special summer event going on where you can gain up to 10,000 diamonds and plenty of other resources to help you start the game strong. So make sure to use my link in the description, help support my channel and download Blade Idol today. Look, I don't want to start this video speculating why a lot of people think Diluc is outdated or if he's good enough. I first want to show you some cool stuff about him and just talk about my own experience before I share my thoughts about Diluc's place in Genshin. And I'm not gonna lie to you, this is probably the second time I actually bothered to really dig deep to understand him, since as you can see, even his talents are still low. So with a little bit of farming, I raised them up, slapped on him a barely functioning Crimson Witch set, but thanks to the Serpent Spine, the critical rate and damage ratio became good enough. Now, the reason why I first want to talk about my own experience with him is that, well, the game had launched almost two years ago, and I think we can all agree that as a community, we grew a lot since the old days. Like, for example, I used to think that the only way to play him was with Benny and Xing Cho, so you can vaporize his attacks, and for the most part, this still remains true. However, did you know there's also Melt Diluc that actually works? And I'm not talking about the old days of using Chong Yun with Diluc. No, no, I'm talking about a legit way you can set up some really big numbers if done correctly. Now, I'm not gonna go deep into how these rotations work, I just want to show you the satisfying results I've had with this team comp. Basically, by using specifically Sucrose and Rosaria or Kaya, you can achieve some really cool combos, and I was surprised to see they actually hit really hard if done correctly, which I mean it's no surprise here since Melt does have a better multiplier than Vaporize. The same could also be said if you use Kazuha instead. I was amazed to see how well you can clear something like the newest 12-3 chamber on the first side, and this is probably my new favorite team I'll be using for at least until Sumeru comes out. However, I will admit, managing your rotation can get a bit tricky and you also need to have at least C2 Sucrose and C2 Rosaria, which both of them will increase their burst duration so you can score more melts with Diluc and to be honest, even if this rotation feels satisfying to pull off, it can get a little too complex and unreliable at times and I get why people choose to go with his good old vape team instead. But yeah, along with his team comp, I also finally spent a good amount of time using him in the double hydro team comp that has been fueling pyro characters ever since Yelan came out and it's also working really well, although it is kind of over Tuned. Putting in his team Benny, Xingqiu and Yelan feels very selfish, since all three of them are in demand by a lot of other teams if you run the Abyss. But overall, I will say this, there's still some new and old stuff that feels very fresh when using him now, and I'm actually surprised to see that once you get the rhythm down, he feels really good. As much as I enjoyed using Diluc, it was hard to ignore some of the things that stood out about him. Like, first of all, it's pretty clear the developers had a very different understanding of how people will use him. The proof is his first passive, which decreases his charge attack stamina cost and increases the duration. I mean, I'm not sure about you, but I don't think many people use his charge attack for damage. And if you do, uh, well, congratulations, you're probably part of the 1% elite. I can probably imagine the devs wanted us to first use his skill with normal attacks, go into his burst mode, and then wave around his claymore using pyro-infused charge attacks. But the reality is, our community figured out quickly because you first want to boost Diluc's damage with supports, activate his burst immediately, and then use his skill in attacks. There's really not that much time left for charge attacks, and even then, they still won't trigger things like Xingqiu's burst, so it's just an attack that exists purely for flavor purposes. Or how about the fact his best weapon is locked behind a paywall? Remember how I mentioned Serpent Spine helping me out with critical rate? Well, there's no other claymore that gives this substat, and at max refinement, it's actually his best in slot weapon, provided there's Benny Boy or someone who can boost his attack. Otherwise, Redhorn exists, but it's far more superior on Noel or Ito and not worth spending precious primos for Diluc. Which then means out of remaining 5 star options, Wolf's Gravestone could be the weapon you might have potentially have pulled, which is pretty good and it's also kind of his signature weapon, since everything else remains a niche option like the Enforge or Rain Slasher. 
And the thing is, I wouldn't even care about this situation, but his pure free-to-play options are just so lackluster in comparison. Both Prototype Archaic and Sea Lord just aren't that good to work with these damage multipliers. And then, finally, there's also the dreadful Crimson Witch Domain. I really really hate this place. It vaporized like 5,000 of my primo gems, and I barely got anything good out of it. At least with someone like Xiangling, Hu Tao, or Yoimiya, you can get their artifacts from the emblem in Shimanawa domain. And yes, I'm fully aware of that Shimanawa is not the best set, but at least the domain is resin efficient, and you can farm two extremely flexible artifact sets. However, this situation could become less annoying if in the future, you can obtain this dreadful set from something like an artifact strongbox. But still, these are the few things that really stood out about Diluc. Don't get me wrong, the reason I started this video with my own experience using him is because, at the end of the day, I had fun using him, and I could also clear the abyss, even with a pretty average artifact set. And sure, you could say it was the insane supports doing the heavy lifting, but come on, I think we're all past that point of thinking about characters as single units, since you still need to have synergy with your teammates in order to utilize their powerful boosts. And yet, I still want to mention something regarding the pyro character meta. Listen, I think that no matter how you look at it, Diluc is still a capable unit, but clearly Hoyoverse didn't fully think him through for the long-term future, and he kind of got power crap very early in Genshin by Hu Tao. Although, I think it's mostly because they're not in the same kind of situation we have with Ganyu and Ayaka, which both at least get compared between each other and provide different possibilities, or can even be used together as well. But at the same time, I kind of think that brushing him off because of Hu Tao is also a misconception. If you can deal on average 50 to 100,000 damage, damage from vapes or melts by using 4 star supports and achieve this consistently with the right rotation? Is this really so bad when you think about it? Like does the competition really need to exist in order to say that poor Diluc is not good enough for the game? I honestly think people need to give him a chance. Obviously if you have Hu Tao or even Yoimiya fully raised, there's very little reason to raise Diluc as well. But the point is, it's not like he's completely overshadowed as I've been clearly showing you this footage so far of him doing pretty awesome damage. I honestly kind of wish the devs came up with some new way to revamp his playstyle a little. Like, I'm playing right now this gacha game called Cookie Run Kingdom, and this game recently got updated with a new candy mechanic which, when equipped, changes up the abilities of some existing characters. And the intention here is to clearly boost their performance, but also add a new nice way to have fun with an old character. But regardless, I think if we ignore the so-called meta, Diluc still clearly works as a strong unit, and while someone like Hu Tao can overshadow him, she is only available from a featured banner. So you may never end up getting her if you miss the timing window, or you don't have primos saved up. Whereas for Diluc, at least he can spook you and show up from a 50-50 pool. Speaking of which, most of his constellations, from what I understand, aren't that big of a deal, besides his last one, which is kind of funny, because this belief hasn't changed since the game's launch. I personally have him at C2, and I expect I still have a long way until I reach his final constellation, but I could care less. I spent a lot of time using him these past few days, and I think he can really grow on you, especially since he can actually deal really good damage if you're using a strong rotation. But anyway, now that Diluc has a cool new costume, I think a lot of people from the community have started paying attention to him, and I wanted to use this opportunity and give you an unbiased opinion about him. Sure, he has some real drawbacks, but he can also deliver the damage and provides a satisfying playstyle, assuming you will find it enjoyable as well. Oh, and regarding the 5 star costume, yeah, it's pretty cool. He has new idle animations, his flaming attacks gain this pretty cool charcoal black coloring, but I kind of think it's still super expensive for what you're getting. This is definitely a step up from Kaching and Jean's costume, which didn't alter their abilities or idle animations, but I would only recommend getting this now if you want to get the discount while it's still there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I'd appreciate if you could leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Thanks for staying till the end and see you soon.